Welcome to 3-9 Baseball. Here's the pouch you received in the mail with the sleeve, and the sleeve lists all the contents to make sure you, you got what you asked for. Uh, in the back is the QR code that you must have scanned to get to this video. So you are now going to get a short, brief uh, introduction to the game and, and some visual instructions. In here is a, just a card, a welcoming card from me, explaining a little how the game came to be. And then, of course, the all-important board, uh, which folds and fits into the pouch and lays on the table in front of you with home plate, maybe between the two of you. Or if you're playing as solitary, it's a good angle to have the, that at. You have a scorecard, which we'll use to record runs and outs, a cool 3-9 pencil, and the, this very important manual, instructions. And you might want to read the whole thing first to get a feel of the game, uh, to understand uh, the, uh, the workings. But the most important is page one which is the quick start guide. And in it, if you follow it from one to 12, you're playing the game. Then these two sheets, which you keep on the, de the desk with you, the action sheet, which is critical, and the run tracker, which keeps track of the runners and what happens to them on base when someone is at bat, the result of their bat. So here is, uh, the using pieces, the three dice, the two white, and one red. You have five silver markers and five brass markers. You can use the silver for the home or visitor, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use them for the home team. And I like to line them up inside the foul line uh, on their side of the field where their dugout would be. And then I have the brass for the visitors and they're inside the uh, foul line as well. Now, one of the first things you want to do is put a marker in the first position of the batting order. So the visitor, he's going to be the first batter of the game, the visiting team in the first position. And over here, you might just get a little head start by putting the home team first batter. He doesn't appear until the bottom of the inning. So you have the dice. Like I said, each roll of the dice represents an at-bat for one of the players. There are no balls and strikes. So let's take this first batter from the visiting team is up to bat, and we're going to represent him by this brass medallion. Uh, we keep that so we know who's batting, and this is going to move down the order from first to ninth and then back again. So the, we're at the top of the order, top of the inning, nobody out, nobody on base. Whoa, we got a 12-2. Okay, let's take the 12 first of all. The 12 represents the white column. The white column are the white dice. You go from two, three, four, five, six, down to 12. So we, we know we're in this area right here of the white 12. Now back to the red was a two. So it's a two inside the 12, no matter what place in the batting order this happens to be, this batter got on on an error. So we have a man on first and we have another batter up. So here we are. Uh, and we, my rule is move, roll. So it's the second position in the batting order. And there's nobody out, man on first, top of the first. We have an 11. So we're in the 11 quadrant here. And number five in the red, in the top of the order, F03. What is that? So we go over here and look. And these are in alphabetical order. So we have FO is a foul out. To whom? To number three. So we go down here and it's the first baseman. 
So this batter, the second batter, fouled out to the first baseman. So the first baseman was drifting in foul territory. Now we're going to find out what happens to him. But before we do that, we mark an out, the visitor. So we have one out now. Let's find out what happens to that man on first. So we go to the 11 grouping. We look out, foul out three. And lo and behold, in the first column with a man on first, he stays. The man on first stays put. So now we go up to the next batter. And my rule is move, roll. So it's the third batter. One out, man on first, top of the first. So we now have the third batter up, one out, man on first, and we get a seven, six. So we are in this quadrant with the seven and six in the red. It's in the top of the order. It's a single to left. So we go to the board and we move the batter to first, and the man who was on first, let's find out what happens to him. And the way we do that is we go to the run tracker, and we go to seven, and it was a single to left, and there was a man on first base, he goes to second. He, that column is on first base, and it says he goes to second. So there he is on second. So we have one out, Two men on, we put a new batter in the batter's box, and we before we roll, we move. We have the fourth batter up, the middle of the order, the cleanup batter, with a man on first and second and one out. And we roll another seven, six. That's amazing, but that's what happens. So the seven in this grouping and a six in this row, he's in the middle of the order, Guess what he did? He popped up to the first baseman. So these signals the infield fly rule. And what happens on an infield fly rule? The rule is that the ball is dead and the batter is out. However, in some cases, players may want to advance if they're less than two outs. So we have to go to the run tracker to see if our guy tries to advance, if anyone does, and go seven and look for pop up to the first baseman. Okay, all stay except the man on third base. He would have an option to try, which a manager will decide, and I'll explain in a later video when the manager gets more and more involved in the game. But in this case, we don't have a man on third base, so there's just an out. So that's why I marked the second out here, and we're going to bring up our, our next batter. So we have our batter in his position, and my rule is move, roll. So we have the middle of the order, the fifth batter, two outs, man on first and second, top of the first inning, no runs in, and we have a 9-2. So we go to nine, group, and two, and the stay in the middle of the order is a big strikeout. So the inning ends. And what the next, the first thing we do, we put a goose egg here, no runs in, and we bring everybody back to the dugout, except the batting order. Leave him here so that we know when the next inning comes up who the batter is. So now we're at the bottom of the inning. The home team is up. I take a player out. Okay. Bottom of the first inning. Lead-off batter up by indicating that on the home team. And we roll. We got a 4-3. So we're in the four group. Three. And all three are the same. So we see that the leadoff batter here in the lead top of the order hits a F9. What's an F? We go over here and it's simply a fly out. Fly out to nine. Who's nine? To the right fielder. So this batter 
if you really want to do it, you can put him in the dugout and bring a new batter up, and we mark one out here in the bottom of the first inning. One out, nobody on, second batter. My rule is move, roll. So it's the second batter, and he has a 4-1. So we look in the four block, and you notice the green, there are a lot of green in here. Green is good. It's a hard double, four, one. You see that? Okay, so we're gonna make, he's around in first, he's in the second base. Man on second, nobody out. Bottom of the first inning. We, one out, one out, my, my bad, one out. I checked my scorecard to see that. Now I move, move and roll. My third batter is up. He's usually a good batter. Man on second, one out. And we get a 3-3. Three, three. So three in the white and three in the red. And it's the, uh, he's in the top of the order. And he flies out, I say, to eight, because I know F is fly out. And eight is what? Who's the eighth? The center fielder. Okay, you see what could have happened if it were the middle of the order? It would have been a triple, but no, it's the top of the order, F8. This is the chance aspect of the game. So now there are two outs, and let's find out what happens to the man on second. So this was a 3-3, and it was a fly out to eight, and the man on second stays. He stays. So that answers that. So we have two outs, man on second, and let's bring in a new batter, and we're gonna move and roll. So it is the fourth batter, the middle of the order, two outs, and we roll. Bottom of the first, note runs in, and we have an 11-1. So we're in this group, ooh, things are happening, and a one, which is a, a uh, middle of the order, yeah, he was in the middle of the order, Actually, it wouldn't have mattered, would it? With top, middle, or bottom of the order, 11-1 is always a single to right. So we'll watch him go down to first, and we will decide what happens to the man on second. So we have 11-1, single to right, man on second scores. See? The man on second base scores. So that's a run. We bring him around. Bring him to the dugouts, does all the high fives, and we're going to put a little dot in here for the run, just to remember that a run scored. So we, we get, at least got a run out of that inning. The next batter up happens to be uh, the number five position, move and then roll. So now we have a man on first, run in, two outs, 11-3. Highly unusual, the two 11s in a row. But it happens, and we have a middle of the order. 11-3 is a pop-up to number six. Let's check PU over here. Uh, I happen to know that, that it's a pop-up to the shortstop. So that is the third out. So you don't need a three, you just know you put the one here, and that's the end of one inning. And this, this home team goes back to their dugout. And we're going to go to the visiting team, the top of the second. And we're going to put a man at home plate, ready to bat. And it's move and roll. So we're in the middle of the order. The fifth batter of the visiting team, top of the second inning. And we have an 8-1. So the 8 is this group. And one, what's a geo? Middle of the order. Middle of the order is a geo one, right. So what is a geo? Ground out to the pitcher. So it's a comebacker to the pitcher. And we have one out in the top of the second inning. So if you'd like, you can change your batter. This guy might be a little luckier. We have one out. And it's a move roll. We're still in the middle of the order. It's a six batter, and it's a four-one. This is going to be good. 
four one. Middle of the order is a hard double. Hard double, simple as that. So we're just gonna move our runner down to fur rounds first and is on second base. So we have one out. Uh, we'll bring a new batter to the plate and my rule, move, roll. We're in the bottom of the order now. They don't hit as well. So it's a six, one, bottom of the order. Six, one, and it's an F7. What's an F7? An F7 is a fly out to the left fielder. So let's put that out there. It's a two out. Now let's find out what happens to the man who doubled, who's on second, F7. Uh, so it is, here's the F7. We have a man on second. He went to third base on that out, on that fly to left field. He tagged up. So let's assume it was in deep left center field. So he goes to third. So we have a man on third. This guy got out, if you want to do that, and bring in your next batter. And we have two outs, and we move, and we roll. So we're in the bottom of the order. It's the mustard-colored column on the left in the action sheet. And we have a 7-3. Seven, 7's three. usually good. 3 is good. Whoa. He's not in the top of the order. He's not in the middle. He's in the bottom of the order. Even though 7 is good, this guy, Geo 5s what did he do? He grounded out to the third baseman for the third out. Let him left a man on base. Uh, yeah, so no runs in. So it's, the score is one nothing with the home team. Okay, bottom of the second inning. We're going to bring our batter up from the home team. No outs, obviously. And we're going to move and roll. So we move the batting order. This was left over from the last inning. So the fifth batter made the last out last inning, so now we have the sixth batter. We've moved, we roll. Six, two. And by the way, you don't have to move the dice like I am here. I'm just doing that for your viewing. So this is six and two. We're in this row. And we remember that we are in the middle of the batting order. Six, two, and it's an F8. So remember, F is a fly out, and I think this is a center fielder's first time he made an out, so we're going to make one out here. So if you'd like, change these guys, and we're in the, uh, we're move and roll. So it's the bottom of the order now, the seventh batter, one out, bottom of the second inning. I like to repeat bottom of the order before I roll. And we have a five, one, bottom of the order. Here's the five, one, bottom of the order, K. What's K? I think you know what's coming. It is a strikeout. By swinging, by the way. Uh, sometimes it's backwards, that's by, by call, third strike. So, we put the second out, you see how fast the innings move? And if you want to bring in a new batter, we're at the bottom of the inning, two outs, nobody on. Move, roll. We're going to move to the eighth batter, bottom of the inning. Bottom of the order, excuse me. Ooh, two, three. That's usually good. Very, very, very good. Two, three, bottom of the order, not so good. Geo sex, you know what's coming, right? Ground out to the shortstop. Need third out. Just draw your big goose egg. So there we have it. So we have two innings, two innings, and we've seen some interesting things. We've seen a, an infield fly rule, which is kind of unique. We've seen a strikeout. We've seen an interesting run scored. Uh, and uh, the score after two is one nothing. So what we just did, we played two innings essentially with the quick guide. 
Uh, we went through that. We didn't do any of the other electives that will come in a later video that I'll talk about. And, but we did get some interesting things. We got, uh, I think, 11-6 twice. We had a strikeout. We had an infield fly rule, which may never happen in a game. But it happened in this game because that's the chance part of it. Uh, the most important part that I think you really must ingrain in your head is moving that uh, batting order medallion because that has to be moved. It changes the outcome. You could see in one point, I think we were somewhere with, if it had been the middle of the order, it would have been a triple. But uh, it, I think we flew out or grounded out. Uh, so that's it. It's not as complicated as it looks. All you do is follow the dice. The white dice, the red die, and the batting order. And you got it. There are 198 possibilities, but I won't go into that. And remember to keep the scores, the outs, and the little notation for runs, and you're set to play. I urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and go through all the likes and dislikes and all of that. And that will get you alerts to future videos that we'll be doing to keep you um, enthused about 3-9 baseball and maybe even answer some questions you might have. So give that a try. Oh, my God.